Good evening. Today is November 15, 2022. The Lawrence Board of Zoning Appeals is called to order at this time. I will need a motion and a second for the approval of the minutes from September 20th, 2022. So move. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Minutes stand as written. If you've not done so, please sign in at the back of the room and anyone wishing to speak tonight, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Answer with I do. I do. Thank you. Do we have any special requests tonight, continuance, withdrawals, or waivers? The petitioner for petition 22 LUSV 14 7955 Oak Landon Road has requested a continuance to the December 20th, 22 meeting with notice. And we did grant that. That is their second continuance. So that will be moved to the December 20th meeting. So anybody who's here for that petition tonight, it will be heard on December 20th unless they ask for a third continuance. They'll get one more. If they're not ready, they'll, it'll be withdrawn, and they have to wait a year to refile. Huh. That was it. Okay. <laughs> no, because it's automatic. It's automatic. Yeah. Okay. Now for new business, we'll hear 22 LSV 15 69 16 Winona Drive, <laughs> City of Lawrence. Variance of development standard of the City of Indianapolis Consolidated Zoning Subdivision Orange for the D2 District, Table 744-201-1 to allow for an existing mini barn, sh quote, shed located in the front, um, front yard setback, which is 30 foot required, 22 feet provided. Anyone here for this case? Okay, petitioner, we, yeah. we need the petitioner to come up and present the case. Case. <clears throat> Can I ask a preliminary question? Um, I'm looking at the this page where <clears throat> Chris Duckworth and Stacy Pruitt authorizes Bo Lawrence Board of Zoning Appeals to file land development petitions. Is that a I don't think we can they're the owners of the property. I think they just filled out the consent form for themselves. I don't know why. No. But they own the property, the assessor's record. Yeah. They didn't need it. It's just an extra form. All right. The the board can't take no. <laughs> your... J.D., that's a form that if I own the property and you're leasing it... I understand. I can authorize you to file for a variance right. with this board. But the board can't file no. the variance. No, that's not what that says. Yeah, it is, but that's okay, as long as we understand they're doing it on their own. <laughs> oh, I see. They wrote in the Lawrence Board of Zoning Appeals. Right. I see. Yeah, we kind of fumbled. They, that's just so good. <laughs> We're not doing anything. I would move that we disregard that delegation or attempt a delegation. Yes. Proceed with the petition. Gotcha. Okay. It's our first time filing a variant, so. Uh, <laughs> okay. That's okay. We're doing the best we can. Apologize for the mistake. Okay, go ahead. Um, I sent Renee a list of photos. Yep, and they have them. What I'm going to talk about is going to go in that order. So if you don't mind browsing at those pictures while we go through, um, we've got it in order. So the first one is the picture of the shed. So we're asking for a variant. Um, we feel that our property has challenges that are unique to our property. We feel that we have some undue hardship that is no fault of ours, and it's limited to the physical conditions of our lot. And we don't feel like we're advocating for rights superior to our neighbors. So the first thing, um, in our neighborhood, we have several homes that have sheds in their front yard or what the city would deem front yard, um, five of them within a half, a quarter of a mile of our house. Um, we also have a detached garage that is closer than the 30-foot setback, and we have a home across the street from ours that's closer than the 30-foot setback. Um, which they probably have variances and all that good stuff. I just wanted to bring to the board's attention that we're not the only property that on that street or in our section of the south side of Indian Lake or the section three of Indian yeah. Lake that have a, a, a dwelling that is closer than the 30 foot setback. Um, the other one to notice that Indian Lake is not a planned cookie cutter neighborhood. 
All of our lots, houses, outbuildings are unique to each lot and its challenges. And we feel, living on a lake, that we need to protect the natural beauty of the lake. So anything we're going to do that might not be as <coughs> beautiful, we would want to put roadside versus lakeside. We live on a dead-end street. We are the third house. <coughs> And so not a lot of people drive by our house unless they're going to our neighbor's house. Um, whereas when you're on the lake and you look up, if we would have to remove trees, which we would have to if we put the um, shed in the backyard, uh, then people from the lake, which is the entire community, is using our lake. So we feel more people would be affected if the shed was in the back of the yard. And one thing I'll also add, if we were to do a shed in the <coughs> close vicinity to the house, the we take much more significant construction as in pilings, larger foundations instead of just a typical shed structure. So the first picture you see is a picture of our shed. <coughs> quality material, it was custom built. Um, it was built to match the color and style of our home, which is a mid-century modern home. The shingles, the paint, the cedar, um, and the landscaping all are a unified front when you look at our property. Um, it does meet all of the requirements that are listed on the Lawrence Shed Cheat Sheet which um, we take complete blame, but I did reference the cheat sheet and it just stated that we should not be on an easement and it had to be under 200 square feet, which our shed is not on an easement and it's only 120 square feet. It does not have electricity to it. Um, so this, the shed there will allow us to take stuff out of our garage. We have three kids and will allow us to finally be able to park our van in the garage. <coughs> By parking our van in the garage, we would decrease the crime risk. We've had a couple homes that have had um, cars broken into. Decrease the risk of damage from tree limbs. We have a huge oak tree that pelts us with acorns as well as a hickory tree, which does. And then it would also increase our curb appeal by being able to put our vehicle in the garage. Um, if you go to the next picture, and you'll see a picture of our home. Our home does not face the street. Our home faces north. So when you drive by our house, you're actually looking at the side of our garage. You're not looking at the front of our house. So the shed faces the front of our house. So I view that area as my side yard, not as my front yard. And if you look at my house, you can see the shed appears to be when you're looking at the front of my house and my side yard. Um, it's positioned to allow us the widest access to the backyard. So if you go to the next picture, I have an arrow pointing. There's only one access point for us to get to our backyard. Our home is a Y-shaped or boomerang-shaped mid-century modern, and it takes up the, almost the entire lot. If you look at the, and I'm sorry I didn't add it, and I should have. If you look at the plot plans, the V of our home, so our home sits like this. The peak of our home, we only have six to eight feet to the property line. And on the north side, if you go to the next picture, well, a little bit further, you'll, well, no, not, I'm jumping ahead of myself. But anyway. <laughs> We have a site plan. That's my, my staff report. Okay. Okay. You'll see that my house takes almost the entire width of it. So that is the only access that I have to the backyard. And here in a couple pictures, I'll show you the north side of my lot. And I'm very close to the house next to us. There's no path. It's a treacherous little winding path that you have to walk around trees and bushes to get to. So the north, the it's one side, steep. yeah, very the steep. one side is not even an option. So the only side I have is the back side or the south side of the residence. Um, we, like a lot of people on the south side of Indian Lake, our sewer line goes underneath the lake, believe it or not. And we're unfortunate that we are having problems. And so the city of Lawrence is actively trying to find a solution. And most likely that solution is going to be to do a grind pot. What's it called? A grind pit next to the house. A grind pit next to the house. We need <laughs> access for larger equipment to be able to do that. If, not just for the, the installation of it, but for further you know, future problems. And along with that, we have a seawall issue on the back side of the house. And the only way they can get to that is by the south side of the house, okay. which is the only area we have for access for equipment to get back there to push dirt to backfill and all that kind of stuff. So again, we are, our shed sits, if you notice it's at an angle, it sits 22 feet from the right of way in the back and 24 feet roughly, these are roughly because it's hard to get exact, roughly 24 feet in the front. And so we are only asking for an eight foot variance because our citation was for a 30 foot setback and again we sit at 22 and 24 foot respectively. So if we move that shed eight feet over, if you notice it's going to make that area very narrow. So we would have to go on the other side of the shed, but if you 
it's kind of hard to see in the picture. There's actually a hill that goes all the way around. So it, um, it's probably it, about a foot and a half to two foot elevation from the backside of the shed, at the ground level, to where it meets the flat, flattens out to the property line with our south neighbor. Um, the other thing is the cosmetic appearance. So our house, if you look at that picture, is embedded into the hillside by about two feet. So it makes the home appear shorter than what it is. Our garage at peak is 14 foot. My shed is only 10 foot in the front, 8 foot in the back. If you look at the picture, it does appear that the shed is taller. And that's just due to the fact that our property, from the right of way down to the lake, drops 65 feet. And so that drop starts at the right of way. So the shed is actually sitting at a higher elevation. If we put that shed next to the house, cosmetically, it would appear to dwarf the house and would not look as nice. Plus, well, so I think the shed's probably about two and a half foot or so below the grade of the road as well. Yeah. Um, and that's the only flat buildable spot we have on our property. The side yard is very narrow, which I'll show you pictures in a minute. The backyard is very steep. This position of this shed is the best that we can do um, to, to have a shed and have an easy access to it. Um, the next thing is safety. So if you go to the next picture, it shows the width of the walkway. So as you can see, it's, we have at most, it's I think 15 feet. So if we moved it another eight feet, we would only have eight feet on that side to be able to get to the back of the house. The next picture shows our front yard. Um, it's roughly, the shed sits roughly 22 feet from the right away. And if you notice, there is an area where the arrow is at that is a flat land that's about 18 foot. Then the hill, <coughs> then it goes down two feet and there's about four feet to where you hit the shed. That 18 foot has a geo grid underneath it that allows for additional parking for us <coughs> so we're not on the street. It's a, it, for safety reasons, it is emer you can use it as an emergency pullover or if you're walking and a car is coming, you can easily get into our yard. The and shed also, is not stopping anything that would increase the safety. And also to control erosion because on that lake, there's a lot of erosion, mm -hmm. erosion issues with uh, the land there. The next thing itself is the shed itself. The block, we painted it black. Um, oh, no, oh no, I'm sorry. Okay, and then it's a dead end street, which I've already mentioned. Um, next thing is the appearance. We've taken care to reduce the appearance of the shed. Um, from the road, there's landscaping at our mailbox. So if you see our mailbox, 6916, you see the wood sign. Behind that are three tufts of grass, which are new, but they will get to a, t a height of five to seven feet. So if you add that our shed drops um, one to two feet, and then you add five to seven feet, when that grass reaches maturity in a couple years, it will basically block that shed. But just to make sure, when you look at the shed, there's the tufts of grass that are by the shed. There's also, if you kind of blow that up, there's three yellow arbs, which will get five to 10 feet. So in the next couple years, as our landscaping matures, um, the shed, the appearance of the shed will be basically masked from the street. Our, the color of the shed is black. It's the same roof as our home. It's the same black as our home, so it matches our home. The windows in our shed are real windows. We did, we went, we knew that was gonna be appearance from the street. Um, we went with nice quality materials. Um, the next side shows the back side of the landscaping, which again, those yellow arbs that are right behind the back of the shed, those will grow five, to be five to 10 feet. So in the next several years, um, I couldn't find them taller in the yellow and I really like the yellow with the black. And we also put, if you look back in the front, uh, the, the picture we just had, we put a 25 foot maple, autumn glory maple that we installed to further reduce the appearance of that shed. Um, the side yard, it is near. If you go to the next picture, the widest point of our side yard from our house to a row of trees, which on the other side of the row of trees is the property line, is 14 foot. At its narrowest is six foot. So there's no place along the side of the house. If the shed was put to the back, which again, we're not asking for that because we only need, I need to ask for that eight foot variance. But if we did put a shed in the back, we would have to put a three foot at least path down. And again, our home drops 65 feet from the right of way down to the lake. The next picture shows um, our north side of our property and you can see how close our neighbor's house, the Joseph's are to our home. There's no pathway or no possible spot to put a shed on the uh, north side of our home. 
And then the next picture is our backyard, and it's kind of a collage, just so that it, you don't think that I somehow doctored that photo to make it appear steeper than what it is. Our backyard is a cliff. Basically, my, I have a four-year-old who has autoimmune encephalitis that manifests as autism, and my mom is scared to death he's going to fall and roll all the way into the lake. So she refuses, so she does not want him back in the lake. It is that steep. So anyway, as you can see, there's no place in the back of our property where we could put um, a uh, shed. If we did put a shed back there, we would have to remove multiple uh, mature trees. By removing multiple mature, mature trees, it would make our house appear more prevalent from the lake. Currently, when you're on Indian Lake and you look around, besides for one house, you don't see homes. They're all covered with trees. It's beautiful on Indian Lake. If you've not been on, it's, it's gorgeous. It's worth Plus, we'd be worried by erosion, erosion yeah. issues as well. I mean, obviously, trees keep the erosion mm -hmm. under control. Yeah. Um, it also would require extensive foundations, foundations on stilts. And as I said with my son having autism, we don't want to encourage him to be in the back of the house. If his bikes are in the back of the house and he starts going back there on a regular basis, it scares me that he might think, oh, I just want to go back and get my bike. And you know, you know how children with disabilities, it's not something that I want to encourage. Um, the shed would block our lake views. Um, we would have to have a narrow steep path, and it would de defeat the purpose of the shed. The shed is to get stuff out of our garage, lawnmower, snowblower, kids' bikes, and stuff like that, so that we can park our car. Um, and again, anything that we do, we don't want to deter from the natural beauty of the lake. I think I've covered everything. Anybody have any questions about why we picked the location that we picked? And <laughs> our apologies for not getting a variance prior to building the shed. Again, we, I, we didn't realize it. Does the board have any questions at this time? Um, huh? Well, first I want to say this is the best shed advocacy I may have <laughs> I will agree. <laughs> I was so thorough. Yes. So I just want to first, I mean, I was moved um, <laughs> by the shed. I love my shed. I'm so upset that people aren't happy with it. Yes, I, so I first want to say this was the most thorough shed advocacy, and I think you might want to like start a Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but I do I do have some some meaningful questions, and it's it's just limited to I can't help but notice how large the shed is. It appears really shed. It's twelve by eight. Um, so I like the slope roof, and um, my husband is six foot two. I did not want most um, sloped roof are six foot up to eight foot. But if we did eight foot by 10 foot, my husband's had a head injury from work. He hits his head all the time. And I thought if I put a six foot shed in there, that's shorter than him, mm -hmm. um, which will hurt him. And plus we have reduced storage. So right now where it's 10 foot tall in the front, we're gonna put a shelf. So in the summertime, we'll put our sleds up there. In the wintertime, we'll put the kayaks and stuff like that. So it gives us an additional storage to allow us to keep the footprint only at a 12 by 10. I think it appears larger than what it is. I had to throw a tape measure on it several times. Like, there's no way because it's just the... Because, yeah. the, oh, again, just, our home is yeah. 14 foot, but it's just that we're yeah. we're on a hill. Yeah. And the house, if you notice, if you see the stone on the front, um, our house is embedded two foot into that hill. So it just gives that illusion that it's taller than our home, but it's not. Yeah, I can see that. So, I guess, so my question and... Um, have you ever seen those tiny houses? It's That's kind, kind of, of a like. she shed. <laughs> is that is this is it like livable in here? Oh, no. There's no electricity. Yeah. It's not insulated. Oh, it doesn't have plumbing or anything. It's not like it. No. It's not a door. Well, it's got kids' bicycles and a and a uh, <laughs> what do you call it? A I, I, I enjoy I enjoy design. So I mean, it's I don't a lovely think shed. Sheds I looked at to get to that point, but yeah, mm -hmm. it's a lovely shed. It would just change our application, right? If this sure. was going to be yeah. like an Airbnb. She may kick me out of there one day. The right now, no. If anything, I will move into it, not you. <laughs> it's a she shed. The kids in the house, I guess. That shed is me. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think that was my only question because I thought, golly, that is. Really it looks good, but it is only 12 by 10. Yeah. yeah. And um, the um, guidelines say you can have up to a 15 foot shed. A 15 right. foot tall shed. Yeah, I saw, I saw yeah. that. So we're, we're within the thing. I just was. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's like, you know, one of the things you have to consider is like the public health and safety. And I thought, sure. oh, no, it makes sense. Ask this. But, um, well, but that is true, because honestly, we have had people oh, do yeah. that. Stranger things have occurred. Right? No, yeah. so, so no, you, you yeah. a valid question. Yeah, yeah. But that was my only question. That was only my only. Yeah. Right. Thank yeah. you. And it does, it does have that 18 foot um, same plane as the right of way. So if somebody needs to pull over or something like that. Um, yeah, but it sounds like you're going to put. Uh, Canoes or kayaks or something. Yeah, kayaks, yeah, bicycles, bicycles, the thousand outside mm -hmm. toys that the kids have. And, you know. <laughs> and, some and they are a thousand. My yeah. husband like, has a million tools. Okay, good, thank you. So I do have a question. Sure. The only consideration tonight is a setback. Is yes. that not true? Correct. I heard you talk about 30 feet, yeah. but Dan mentioned it's only 25 feet. Your requirement. That's what I found when I was doing the research. Yeah, our violations at 30. I don't know. Are the violations at 30? So I, you're zoned. Better. You're actually in a, sorry, a D2 zone, which it's a local street. Local streets require a 25 foot setback. It's not a collector street. It's not a thoroughfare, which mm -hmm. are 30 or 40. So actually, we're only talking about a three feet difference. And, and one foot in the front. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was very confusing for us. We sure I did put it. that in our staff report because okay. Marion County did say 30, but that's for a thoroughfare. So yeah, that uh, makes sense. Street. Winona is not their street. I don't know why they're, it's not their street. And I thought I saw a dimension you're only 22 foot from the right away. Right. The back side is 22 foot. The front side is 24 foot. Yeah, so. I have it. My house is a Y shape, so yes, it's at yeah, an angle. Kinda. So I angled the shed to match the angle. So the front of the shed is 24 feet. The back of the shed is roughly 22. But, okay, so it's yeah, at most three right. feet in one place, one. Yeah. yeah. Right. Any other questions? No. I one, not, not really a question, but I would, would like to say that that shed does look very nice. And when you go around the corner from your house on Indian Lake Road, I suppose it is, there's a house, a brick house, single story brick house. It looks like it has a shed in the front yard. It does. It's approved by variance also. Yeah. That so, variance several I mean, years ago for that one. Okay. It does not look as uh, unappealing as that one. So. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, so and that's a little and that's on a main like when you come into our subdivision, that's the first thing you see. Where ours, you have to go as if you're coming to our home, you know, to the cul de sac. What is the road that when you go down, there's like a yeah. gate? Is that's there a gate down road? Yeah, that's the south beach, like a playground. There's a marina there for right. and uh, a boat docks boats and, and stuff. stuff. Yeah. Private use only. But we'd let you sled down it, Jim. <laughs> no, no, don't slide down it. <laughs> we already did that. That was yeah. not good. That was, <laughs> did not go down that steep hill. My son about, about killed himself last year doing that. Two years ago. Two years ago, yeah. We don't do that anymore. Yeah. No. We forgot there was all those rocks along the roadway there, and he hit those about 20 mile an hour on that <laughs> sled. So. Oh, no. Yeah, luckily, he hit it just right and flew just right and landed mm. on the rocks, but mm. back on to the snow. So thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, it hurts. So. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there any remonstrators for or against the petition? I have two letters, three letters actually, that we received um, from remonstrators for the petition. Um, I can read the letters. You do have them in your packets, board members, if you want to reference those. I'm just going to summarize so that in the for the time. Um, Jason and Stevie Kirsch wrote a letter uh, recommending approval. Um, they said that Indian Lake is a community that rejects cookie cutter aesthetics and that they've, um, the shed is quite appealing and fits well with the mid-century vibe of their home. Um, that they put some thought into the paint colors, landscaping and lighting to ensure it was pleasing. And um, the Indian Lake Improvement Area Board of Directors is subjective to what assessment of good and bad design is and quite frankly is easily swayed by residents who talk the loudest. They are in favor of leaving the shed structure as it stands. Green Tree Real Estate Group, Marge Crouch is the real estate agent who sold this house. And um, she comments that she's never seen new buyers so excited and anxious to make improvements to a home. 
And since they purchased the home, they've improved it remarkably with thousands of dollars of improvements, including this barn. Um, and she supports them. And then the third letter I have is from an Alyssa Alexander, um, 10324 Indian Lake Boulevard South. And she's neighbors and agrees with the shed and would like to see them um, get awarded approval at this hearing. Um, she was a member of the board and uh, says it was a rental property for five years prior and was really neglected and in poor condition. And since they've bought it, they've made a ton of improvements and um, also mentions that it's quite impossible to get into the backyard and that any other placement of the shed would be inappropriate for the property. Thank you. Anybody else for or against the petition? Please step up to the mic. Hi, my name is Mark Rumreich. I'm the uh, president of the Indian Lake Homeowners Association. Um, just this will help later on to explain. Uh, the Indian Lake covenants require that uh, residents submit their plans to the board uh, before construction for a uh, number of structures, including sheds. And the Duckworths uh, didn't do that. And uh, the first that the board learned of this shed was when it appeared. Um, so uh, the uh, board heard from a number of uh, residents uh, who, who lived uh, near the property and were upset by it. And uh, I asked the board to go take a look, form their own independent opinions about it. And uh, all the board members, all nine board members did. And we discussed it at the board meeting and uh, unanimously felt that um, it, it was a detriment to the neighborhood uh, that the, the front yard of this property is very small and um, we didn't think it was appropriate that there be a shed there at all. Um, I'd like to read a couple of letters. Um, first one uh, is from uh, Sandy Joseph. Uh, the Josephs live next door to this property. Bob Joseph is here. Sandy uh, regrettably um, died in, a, in an accident uh, a few weeks ago and uh, is not here. Uh, but uh, Bob uh, gave me permission to read this. So this was a letter from Sandy to the board. Uh, this is Sandy. Although I agree with Bob completely, I must add that the structure is so tall and obtrusive, it draws the eye away from other neighbors' beautifully tended gardens and flowering trees. Our front yards in a community are not just our private property, but rather community space that everyone enjoys on Winona. All work hard to preserve a lovely natural setting. The front yard is our shared experience. As such, the building would be perfectly appropriate in the backyard or tucked against the back of the garage and the side yard. In the front yard, it commands the view resembling an outhouse on steroids. I'm sure you've noticed that in upscale neighborhoods of Geist, Carmel, or Fishers, the structure would never be permitted in a front yard. Moreover, our surrounding neighborhoods of Kens Kensington Farms, Watson Farms, Winding Ridge, none of these neighborhoods allow a structure like that in front, yard, in front yards at any of their homes. It would be interesting if a realtor would assess property values of the nearby houses and see if this front yard outbuilding would affect adjacent property values. Moreover, I have to concede that I was wrong. I was against, <clears throat> excuse me, I was against neighborhood governments because to me, they represented nosy noras who would disagree with a no mo may that would benefit the butterflies. They would harass neighbors who had a camper or an RV in their front, in their yard for part of the season or would ticket a neighbor who got behind in their gardening because they were working two jobs. I loved that Indian Lake was a place of tolerance, but you all were right, times have changed. Never in my wildest dreams would I have thought a neighbor would erect a structure so broad and large that it would affect the beauty of the space next door. 
and down the block. Had they placed a huge structure on our side of the property, it would dominate our picture window. Imagine how you would feel if it was the first thing you saw out of your front patio and how others will feel as they head down to the lake. It's a bit like someone putting a cell tower in the front yard because they wanted the best internet for them. I hope the board will move to fix this very sad issue. Thank you for all you do and your help in this conundrum, Sandy Joseph. Um, got an another letter here. For this meeting, I contacted, uh, I tried to contact every neighbor on Winona and some of them were um, neutral about it or in favor of it, uh, but um, I'm aware of four neighbors who live nearby who are not, in, who are opposed to that a shed being uh, in the front yard, period, let alone um, violating the setback. Okay, so this letter is from uh, Bill Teston. My wife and I have been homeowners for 35 years down the street at 6808 Winona. We were very surprised to see the very large shed constructed in the front yard at 6916, and it is very out of place in our neighborhood. The shed takes up a large portion of the small front yard, and we are very concerned with the negative effect it will have on the property values in the neighborhood. The house at 6916 is part of the Indian Lake HOA. The HOA is designed to protect the values of the properties for its members. The bylaws require any property owner to have any construction project be approved by the board. The homeowner failed to follow the covenants and based on feedback from the neighborhood, the board would not have allowed the construction of the shed in their front yard. My wife and I oppose the proposed variance. So, any questions? Any? Mm -mm. Do you, know, do you know when it was constructed, when it was put up? Yeah, I have a question, Mark. Are you concerned about the setback or just the architecture? Uh, we're concerned about um, um, well, I mean, I think the board felt and, and many of the neighbors feel like that front yard just, or that, I'll, I'll call it a front yard, that front yard should not have, doesn't have the space for a shed. It's, it's, it's um, even if it were moved a few feet further back, um, it, de it detracts from the, the character of the, the neighborhood. Um, so... Uh, now, if they opt to move it back a few meet, feet and uh, meet the setback, it's likely that the board will decide we'll have to pursue legal action, uh, but uh, we'll come to that uh, after uh, uh, this variance uh, makes its de decision first. But you do acknowledge that we at Indian Lake have unique problems that... Uh, oh, I my property doesn't have one flat spot on it. And uh, like Stacy said, my parents uh, were so worried our kids were gonna roll down to their death down the hill. So we have some unique problems right. that uh, there's not many flat places. Right, now, um, you know, I don't know that there's you know, any anywhere that it says people have a right to have a shed. You know, it's 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 not like this is some God given right that you've got the right to have a shed and therefore um you know and this is the best place for it, therefore I deserve to have it here. You know, uh I guess my view on that is um as you said Every property, you know, we, we have an unusually hilly area, a lot of unusual um, uh, lot shapes and sizes, uh, but there, nowhere were people guaranteed that when they bought their property that they would have the right to build a shed, you know, and uh, so, and we feel like this is one, maybe one of those uh, situations. 
But it does seem like we have a number of garages and sheds right on the street. And speaking of that, do we know that Winona is built where it was platted? I know South Drive isn't even close to what the plat says. I've heard, uh, um, I've heard uh, stories about uh, it's not where it's supposed to be, you know, uh, but, uh, you yeah. um, Why don't you, Dr. Joseph, yep. why don't you introduce, give your name and address before the board? I, I don't want to in front of my neighbor. I still have questions for him, too. Um, I'm Dr. Robert Joseph. I live next door to uh, the Duckworth Pruitt family. Um, Are you in the gray house that's in the pictures here? North uh, or south? No. Um, I am not. Uh, I... First of all, um, I have a statement from the neighbor on the other side, um, which is the house that's pictured, at least in these pictures. Uh, may I approach? These are from um, Jennifer, unfortunately, could not be here tonight because um, she had a kitten, seven week old kitten today. Um, I'll read her statement, if I may, please. Uh, my name is Jennifer Norrington. I live at 6910 Winona Drive, next door to the Duckworths. I have lived here 23 years. I like the Duckworths and want to maintain a friendly relationship with them. I received my letter of notice yesterday, November 14th. It was postmarked November 9th. This is not compliant with the 10-day prior to meeting notice requirement. The Duckworths want a variance granted to allow them to keep their shed in its current location so they have a place to store their stuff. With a home of over 4,000 square feet and much remodeling, I would think they would have sought ways to maximize storage prior to the solution being a shed in the front yard. I am not in support of the variance for the simple need of a place to store stuff. I have stuff that needs to be stored as well. I use half my garage for this. In the winter, we tarp our outdoor furniture. We got rid of the excess. Storage is not a hardship. Codes are important. They help to maintain the integrity of the neighborhoods for property values and safety of homes. Indian Lake is a beautiful neighborhood with a lake, trees, animals, nature at its finest. Where I once was able to see beautiful trees, I now see the back of an overgrown shed. The location and height of the shed are both in violation of code. The situation was avoidable. This meeting was avoidable. All that had to be done was to go to the Indian Lake Improvement Board prior to the shed being built, and they would have found out that the shed could not be located where it is. I'm not against the Duckworths having a storage shed. I just wanted to be compliant with code so that a precedent is not set for others to do the same. Thank you for your work, Jennifer Norrington. Let me start out by saying that I know the Duckworths. Uh, I want to maintain a friendly relationship with them. Um, I know their brother-in-law very well. He's one of my closest friends, as a matter of fact. Uh, the last thing I want to do is to fight with any of my neighbors. Um, I also was opposed to the covenants as they were uh, being voted on um, for the same reasons as my wife stated in her letter. Um, that being said, rules are rules. Rules are adopted by the majority. The Duckworths closed on that house in 20, 2020, uh, February 1st, 2020, uh, uh, I'm sorry, July 27th, 24th, 1920, uh, 2020, okay. Um, the covenants were adopted on uh, 1 February of this year. The Duckworths had the opportunity to comment on the covenants to vote against them. They received ample notice about the covenants. They chose to ignore the covenants and to build the shed with completely disregarding the covenants. They were informed that they were in violation of the covenants and they knew or should have known that the covenants existed and what the requirements were. After being informed of that and after being informed that they were in violation of the code, 
They went ahead and landscaped it. Now they present us with a fait accompli and ask us to approve it when they did not go through the pre-construction steps to confirm that it was in code, to confirm that it was meeting the covenants. Their contractor had a duty also to know the code. He shouldn't have a contractor's license if he doesn't know the building codes. So either he ignored the building code when he built that, or was instructed to ignore the building code, or didn't care. I personally don't like the shed. I don't like that it's aesthetics, and I don't like where it's located. It seriously detracts from the Norrington's life experience. They live in their front yard and on their front porch. They have a lovely flower garden in their front yard that now they have difficulty enjoying because of the shed that's there. Um, I have to agree with my wife um, that it lacks only a crescent cut in the door to complete the appearance of an overgrown privy. Um, I don't want to fight with my neighbors. I respect Dr. Pruitt. I respect Mr. Duckworth. Rules are rules. They should have known going into this what the rules were. Mr. Duckworth is a law enforcement officer. But we're not here about the rules. We're here for the setback. And that's what we're here to vote on. Not about the, whether they followed the rules or not. Well, the code is part of the rules, isn't it? The covenants are between you all. No, we're just a zoning board. We're here I mean, on the setback. We're not here for your covenants or anything like that. Yeah. We're here. Frankly, I'm kind of uncomfortable with like the emotional charge behind this whole presentation. Um, and so, you know, we're here, we're here to talk about setbacks. Um, not the dispute with the neighbor. The contractors should have known about the setbacks. Well, obviously, that's why we're here retroactively talking about it. So why didn't they seek a variance before construction? It, 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 at this point, it's already there, so we're addressing it. Okay. So, you know, you say, I, I want to have a friendly relationship and not fight with my neighbors, but you're here very emotionally charged of fighting your neighbors, and so your words aren't matching what you're saying. And it's, you know, rules are rules, but we're, the, we're here deciding a variance, which is a, a deviation from the rules, which people get all the time. And so it's really, it's really unclear how this is helping us to make a decision tonight. Other than clearly you, you hate the shed, we get that. But, but as far as the setback, I mean, there's nowhere else on the property that it can be placed. But, I mean, do you want it to be attached to the house? I would prefer it would be in the back of the house. I have a shed in the back of my house that's on stilts. It is, I realize the challenges of building on this property. I applaud the, the, the work that the Duckworths have done to improve this property, but I think that shed could have been located elsewhere. Sure, it, it could. I agree with you, but it's, but it's here, and that's what we're addressing tonight. It's here. I mean, so my question is, do you want it to be shorter? Do you want it, I mean, because you talked about the size, I mean, do you want them to not have the shed? Do you want them to put the canoes against the house? It's unclear, it's unclear to me what, what you're trying to convey other than, I mean, what I'm really getting from you is just a lot of emotion. But what I'm trying to understand is, like, objectively, what, are, what is your hope that we can accomplish? I'm hoping that you do not grant a variance and that they must move the shed. Okay, and they gave us a lot of objective reasons why we should. And so what I'm asking for you are, like, like, what should they do with the kayaks? And where should they place the shed? Do you want it attached to the house? Do you want it shortened? I don't want it in the front yard at all. Do you want them to have a shed at all? I don't care if they have a shed. I just care that the shed is in the front yard. So the question is, I mean, if they, wherever they put a shed, they're going to have to come to us for a variance. Okay. Do you understand that? No. Mm -hmm. If no. they put it in the back, they wouldn't need that a variance. That was on the, on, the, on the city's report. It said... And excuse me for being emotional. This was a very emotional thing for my wife who died a month ago. Um, and um, I am emotional about it. 
I mean, but you're here to say rules are rules, and so that's what we're trying to apply. And so that's why I'm asking questions. I'm not trying to be rude either. I, I don't think you're being rude. But it says here in the city's report, there does not appear to be anywhere else to place a storage shed this size on the property without creating a negative effect greater than allowing for a variance. That's, that's the, the petitioner's wording, not ours. That wasn't, what's on, yeah. what's on If you see in the red where it says finding of facts, one, two. I'm going to let you. someone else speak. Okay, before Dr. Joseph. Call from the petitioner. You said you knew where Winona was located. It is so confusing at Indian Lake. Do you know that Winona was built where it's planted? I don't know that. I'm not a qualified surveyor. I can't comment to that. Oh, I thought you did. No, I can only say that I do know that there is one original monument, okay, on the corner of Indian Lake Boulevard, South Drive, and Winona. Uh, that's the only original monument that I'm aware of and that my surveyor was able to find when they did a state survey of the property before we bought it. So other, I know of no other monuments other than that one, but that is one monument that marks the corner of Winona and Indian Lake Boulevard, South Drive. One of the issues out there is when a surveyor has a nice flat piece of paper and says the road's going to go here, it's easy. When he gets out in Indian Lake and you have a gully and a ditch and a cliff, the roads never got built quite where the original plat was. So that three foot off of a map might not be three foot off of the road. It's, a, it's always a challenge out there. It, 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 is, it is a challenge. But as I understand it, and, and Chris, please correct me if I'm wrong, measure the distance from the road as it currently exists to the shed. Is that correct? After construction. After construction. Okay. So if we, we're not talking about difference between a plat and the location of the shed. We're talking about the difference between the actual roadway as it currently exists. Okay. We could say that roadway has been there since the 1920s. The 30s. Or the 30s. Well, I mean, the, the, the subdivision was platted in the 20s. Okay. Built in the 30s, Built partially the 30s. anyway. So, I mean, you could make a statement that, that the road as it currently exists is the road. Um, I would agree with that. You know, but I never know if people are looking at plats or roads. Yes. In this case, I believe we're looking at roads as they currently exist, whether that's adverse possession or simply the, the state of the, uh, the world we will live world in. We live in right now is irrelevant. Did you get notice? Did you get? I got uh, a letter on Friday or Saturday about this meeting. But that was the postal service because it was. You said it was stamped the ninth. That Miss uh, Miss Norrington says hers was postmarked the ninth. I received mine Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, she says she mailed them on the night. That's her affidavit. Her affidavit says she mailed them on, was mailed on November 9th, and then put her posted on the property on November 5th. So technically, it needs to be continued. It needs to be continued. With notice to the December 20th meeting. Okay. Or you guys can ask for a variance. You can ask for an exception to the rules if. You guys agree to that for them to hear it tonight and not continue it. You have to come up. You have to come up. I mean, that notice was not given at the, correctly. 
it should have been sent out before then. Mm -hmm. So, Hi, Stacy Perdue. I received an email stating that I could, as long as it was in the mail by November 10th. Um, I think there was some misconfusion because we were supposed to be in October and we were continued. And so the email I received had the wrong date for the actual um, uh, event. The it was hearing. supposed to be the hearing for yeah. tomorrow. And it said, as long as I had everything out by the 10th. So I think Renee, that's right? what, yeah, and that's, that's what, what you misled me. So I'm sorry, Becky, what was your question? So we, you, can, you can do a motion to hear the case tonight anyway with effective notice, or we can notice it again and hear it on December 20th. Those are our options. What does the board want to do? Well, I mean, honestly, litigation was discussed. I don't know that we need to cause any more. Right. They're already here. And they've I quite out obviously have this gotten. This is a very contentious matter, and I think it needs to be done correctly. That's my personal opinion. And no, I'm just one of four. So. I agree. What are your guys' thoughts? Yeah. I couldn't hear, Faith, pull down your mic, couldn't hear your comment. Well, let me, let me shed some light on what I've been talking about. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, I said because it's such a contentious matter, I think that we ought to um, have the notice reserved properly um, with a sufficient time because uh, it seems like there's going to be some issues after we make a decision one way or the other. You're asking for us to ask for a continuance till next month? I think we're going to She is a putting a motion on. But yes, I, yeah, I, she's I moved making to continue a motion this. for the board to continue with this to next month with proper notice. Proper notice. Yes, could and you, to be. Could you fix the actual application? What page is it? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So I'll work with that. Consent form, sir. There's no. You yes, don't sir. need a consent form at all. And you want. You don't need a consent form at all. You want me to sit down? Yeah, for just a second. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm trying to find my emails. I don't remember doing that, but okay. Good evening, Ken. Good evening. Good evening. Dan Zerner with the City of Lawrence, Director of Economic Development. On behalf of myself and City Engineer Sri Benagopalan, who usually appear before you and issue matters of staff, I think you noticed, probably noticed there's no staff indication on this case, which is, should be appear highly unusual to you. It was. Uh, I made a decision starting last month that I wasn't going to approve anything without going and looking at it first. I think we've done too much of that in the past. So I went out and looked at this. I will say that to uh, describe it as a outhouse is a little harsh. It, it is a very nice storage building. Um, on the other hand, it, it really doesn't meet any of the spirit of the either the local covenants or the setbacks. But what we, Sri and I discussed at length with Renee is that uh, we did not know anything about this, nor did you until long after it was built. And we checked the statutes, we're not your attorneys, but I would think you might want to check with your legal counsel prior to hearing this again, because it's our opinion, the way the statute reads, that this board really doesn't have the authority to issue a variance at this point, because when the we were given the zoning and variance statute last year to decide our own cases, we were not allowed to have enforcement. We don't have enforcement capability or zoning capability, just variances. But because this is already built, it's our opinion that this is no longer a matter of you issuing a variance. It's a matter of enforcement for it to go to the MPO for them to decide what needs to happen. Indy told, gave them a notice of violation and told them to file for a variance with us. Okay. So as long as that's what's yes. happened. Yes. I wasn't aware of that yet. So my opinion is uh, that we don't have an opinion because we don't see a win-win out of this any way we go. Um, it is a nice shed. It should have been approved beforehand. It doesn't meet the current. Uh, so I, I really don't know what you're going to do with this, but that's, I want you to know that we have looked at it. That's all I can say. Any questions for me? Nope. Thank you, Dan. It wasn't any help. <laughs> well, there's a motion on the, fl on the floor to continue this till next week. Or, uh, with next notice. month. Next month, I, right. I, I move to, to continue this petition until the December meeting uh, with proper notice. Okay. Okay. I need a second. A second. Is there a second to continue this till next month? I'll second. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? This um, variance has been continued to next month. 
with notice. And we will hear this next month in the December's meeting, which is December 20th. December the 20th. This will need to go out by the 10th. I'll send you an email in the morning. Okay. Um, will you to yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. We can go to the next case, which is 22 LSV 16 4501 North Post Road, variance of development standard of the City of Indianapolis Consolidating Zoning Subdivision Ordinance, Chapter 740, Article 3, Section 7B, to allow for an eight-foot fence. Is there anybody here? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. I am Tanya Harris from Turning Point Family Worship Center. We are the southern border of Lawrence on 46th Street. And so, I mean, uh, yeah, it's 46 and post. We're here today um, asking for this variance because we've come to a time when we're ready to fence in our property. We have the information in front of you, I believe, um, what all the areas that we're considering fencing in. We have from the senior citizens building on 46 to the corner 46 and post and then from Harrison Point Apartments to the 46 and post is also ours. It houses our school, which we're very, very proud of. We have one of the largest uh, groups of uh, uh, enrollments in, in our 20 year history. And what we are finding is that um, when our kids are outside playing during the day, a lot of times we have to go out and make sure the property is clear. Because it's so open, people like to take the shortcut maybe from one point to another, or they like to sit out for whatever reasons, but we're very protective of our kids. And so that puts my staff where they have to go out and meet strangers. And so we, we feel like it's time. Um, and that's at our 4501 Post Road uh, location. The, um, are we doing both? No, nope, let's do them separate. Okay. So with the um, school kids, we make sure they get fresh air every day. And um, they are there from 6.30 in the morning to five in the evening. Not only that, but if you ever drive down Post Road, most days you're gonna see a lot of cars at Turning Point because we are a very active church. And what I also am greatly concerned about is all of the young people that we have, and sometimes they wanna leave before everybody's dismissed or whatever, and they're going to cars. And it is, we've, we've had some issues. Uh, we try to make sure our young ladies never go unattended. Uh, our doors are always watched, but it's just come to the time. We've been here 20 years now. We try to take good care of a property and uh, certainly welcome everyone, but we find it's time to start fencing it in. So we're asking for an eight foot fence uh, because a four foot fence, if you send a dog after me, I probably could jump it. And so we're trying to make sure it's not welcoming to just jump over the fence and, and take the shortcut anyway, okay? And I think our, our zoning right now calls for a four foot fence. So we are looking to get a rod iron fence. 80% um, of our students go to Heritage Christian when they graduate from Turning Point. And so we're gonna get a fence like Heritage. <laughs> it's a wrought iron fence and we're gonna brick in um, the entries way. We are gonna add additional entrance to our property on 46th Street to kind of ease the traffic that we're finding with the school growing from Post Road to our property. We're gonna add that other interest way um, on that side. So we're gonna get the gating and the fencing first, um, hopefully, and then continue to develop the property. There's a lot I could say, but do you have any questions for me? Well, I'd just like to make one comment. Uh, we're so appreciative of what you have done, you and your husband, mm -hmm. both in the fort with Harrison and Ford and what you do down at 46th and Post is remarkable. It is part of our city that we all worry about and pray about and your effort has been wonderful. So it's simply zoning calls for a four foot and you wanna 
six foot? Eight. Eight foot. Eight foot fence. Rod iron, Rod right? Rod iron. Yes. Like Heritage Christian, just yes. to make sure the kids are safe. Exactly. And staff. And set course. Yeah. Yes. I remember when you came in front of us 20 years ago. Yes, now to ask for permission for the church to... <laughs> yes. I remember too. Yes. I was here when she did the variance. Yeah. Wow. Renee remembered too. She knew I needed a lot of help. <laughs> <laughs> and you have. You, you've... Thank you. Being down in that area has helped that area quite tremendously. Thank you. So, so when you say wrought iron, is going to be like posts? Or... Yes, so it'll be visible through it. Yes, it will be visible. We're not going to do anything to abstract from the beauty of what we're doing to our property. Uh, we want that to be seen as well. Uh, but this is the first step for us in improving our property. We've had some goals that we... Well, we've been building. That's all I can say. Building and buying property. <laughs> so now we're ready to fence, and, that, and that's going to be most important to adding the park and everything else that we want to add there. And we still want it open. You know, we just don't want it open when it shouldn't be open. Wide open. Will, the, <laughs> will these gates only be open when the school's there or the church or someone is there, or are these gates going to be closed? Is it okay out there? I don't know. There's, it's becoming loud out there. It sounds like they're fighting. No, I think that we're... Um, to answer the question, it will vary per day. Okay. Because there's some days... I mean, we're, we're, we're there every day. Right. <laughs> so it will vary. It depends on how late at night. I really think the time at night would determine um, whether the gates are open. Okay. We have neighbors who come, they bring their kids and play on our playground. Right. We have no problems with that. Right. I, yeah. oh. So we don't want to keep them out. We just want them safe. Yeah. Okay, you're not trying to put a, a shed in there, are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's my only question. <laughs> no, okay. It was, so bad. <laughs> it, was the, it was the only way I could be on the fence on this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having too much fun tonight. All right. <laughs> Are they okay? Do we, do we check on our friendly neighbors? Yes. Does the board have any questions for Ms. Harris? Is there any plan for butterfly habitat? I know your, your husband has talked to that lady in the blue back there about it. <laughs> My husband. <laughs> um, <laughs> Our, 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 you know, we kind of balance each other out. <laughs> so no butterflies. <laughs> but we, do, we are going for the park, though. And it has a soccer field. We're putting in a um, putt-putt, that kind of stuff, over near our playground, a pavilion. Are you really? I'm really excited about our And grounds. I want you to also mention that the entire property is not going to be wrought iron, just the visible on 46 and post. Okay. The wooded area is going to be chain link. Yes. Black I just want to make sure that you all are aware link? of that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Along the fence. And, and she has a barbed wire in her photographs. That is not allowed and will not be on there. I saw that. Just I want to make sure that that's clear okay. from the pictures and that you all have all the information. So aesthetic-wise. Aesthetic-wise. It, it's post road. And for, yeah. Okay. And then everything else would be chain Yes, okay. which you don't see behind the tree line and all that. You won't see it. As okay, much. okay. But everything you can see will be wrought iron. So. Well, good for you getting the kids okay. outside. Yes. yes. No, no barbed wire. No, no, no barbed wire. No shed. Barbed wire, no shed. <laughs> At least not in the front yard. <laughs> no. But I, it, can I ask a question? Sure. Oh, there are some uh, drives already on our property on 46th Street. Mm -hmm. um, are we allowed to just use those? You have, have to, to come you back. You have to apply for a right of way permit. Okay. To re excavate them, but you do not have to pay for another driveway cut. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Any other questions for Ms. Harris? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'll hear from any remonstrators for or against the petition. This is 16. Oh, I'm sorry. I got a letter. I'm sorry. Can I read the letter real quick? Okay. I always forget that. 16. Uh, yes, we're doing just 16 right now. What did I do with it? Oh, there it is. Okay, so I have a letter from uh, James and Kathy Clark of 8807 East 46th Street. They also own 
8803, 8815, 8821, 8931, 8814, all on 46th Street, 4517 Clinton, and 8812 East 45th. Um, they are objecting to the variance of development standards um, for both the school and the pantry. It's a corner lot, an eight foot fence will in no way blend in with our quiet residential neighborhood. <coughs> um, cannot imagine how horrible this will look on the corner. Lived here for 39 years and owned several adjacent properties, walk past this corner daily. Um, most houses and structures blend in. It's a clean, quiet area and putting up an eight foot stockade fence is totally out of character. The fence rules have been in place a long time and serve a good purpose. The rules should be the same for everyone. Do not set precedents for the neighborhood, is their request. Okay. Thank you, Renee. Oh, they're here, Renee. <laughs> they're going to oh, I'm sorry. Okay. When you send a letter, I read it. <laughs> so if you want to add anything to that. My husband, Jim Clark, and I'm Kathy Clark. We've been Lauren's neighbors, Lauren's residents for over almost 40 years, and we're very, very involved in the community. Um, and when we, we heard about the, this fence going up, we all, too also did not get our notice. We just received our notice like we were just seeing that this in the past way. week. I mean, it was just like no, really no time to really prepare. However, um, I haven't scanned her what we're concerned on with, I know quite honestly, is, is that we're, we're against it. Um, we're not against that a fence could not be put up, but what we are objecting to is the proposal um, that 4501, and I know we're only looking at 4501 right now, so I'll be back up here for the next one as well. But the uh, proposal clearly is something for, basically it looks, it'll look like industrial or like a prison, especially an eight foot fence. If you look at that curtain right there, that's eight feet. So that's how tall that fence is gonna be. That's not normal in a neighborhood, okay? Nobody else has it. And nobody else has it. And the, the area of Lawrence, we know, and we've been there for a long time, is kind of a forgotten area. Uh, we're at the south end of the of the Lawrence um, uh, city of Lawrence, and um, we we just feel like that um, Turning Point Church and the school is trying to fence in the very people that they are to serve in this community. And fencing, we know, isn't a cheap endeavor, but if someone wants to get into an area, they will make every effort to either vandalize, destroy, and make it become an eyesore. And it will happen, and it, it does happen all the time. I used to do property management for apartment properties, and fences always got broken, one way or another. Um, when we put up fences, the perception that is conveyed doesn't make an environment nor a neighborly thing to do, especially when we are doing God's work right here in this community. It doesn't bring people together, and it makes them feel unwelcome. The church and the school and the pantry is no different than the rest of us in the neighborhood. We have all the same concerns they do, especially when there's now a drug rehab center that's just down the street that's nearby. There are no other commercial businesses that have eight foot fencing around them, nor do any in the city of Lawrence for that matter. Our township schools don't have fences around them. All elementary schools don't have fences around them. And the only reason that Christian Heritage has a fence is because they're on US, US 37. It's a highway protecting their kids. That makes sense. Um, if Turning Point wants to put a fence around their building and the playground area, that would be more suitable. Um, the pantry, which we're talking about right now, the pantry is located at 46th and Post Road, and they already have driveway, ga driveway uh, gates that keep people from coming in to their parking lot. The fence rules are put in place for benefit for everyone in the area. The current rules work very well. An eight-foot fence on the corner will be extremely ugly and no way conform or nor enhance our quiet residential area. Let's face it, an eight-foot fence that looks just like that curtain around the property, what's that going to look like? It's not going to look good. 42-inch fence is more desirable, and yes, I know that there are stray dogs and there are all kinds of things that happen, but even our neighborhoods, our, our homes, have a 42-inch 42 42 fence for the front of them for a reason. If we put an 8-foot fence around that, it's not going to look good. And we, 
truly object to it. So I'll be back up here for the next time, for the next, well, thank we you. We continue this Kathy? with me? Yes. Or, no, no, she, she gave, she gave the scale. That's a big building in a big lot. Uh, it seems to me that in this time of school shootings and all going on, that it makes sense to protect the kids. And I don't view that as comparable to a house. That's a school with kids. Is it and just we need security. My husband's hearing impaired, so he's reading lips, so he's trying to find out what Tom had said. So did you follow it about with today's environment and schools and so forth and the shootings and things that are happening Thanks. and the way the yes. church sits back? <laughs> that it, that it um, scale-wise, that would be okay. We don't have any problem with the fence being put back up closer to the building where the kids are and in, in the corner and the, the, at that point. We're not talking about that one now, but we'll be talking about it. But right now we're talking more about the pantry on the corner. No, we're talking no, about this the is church. school. This we're is talking the church. about the church. Okay. We'll, you'll get your chance okay. in the pantry. So with that being said, Tom, I, 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 I want safety for everybody. You know how I am. You know yeah. me. You've known me a long time. And but the the thing is, is that it's it's already tough enough in our neighbor and our community to see what what's going on. We know. I I know. You know. I know. <laughs> you know. So it's like, you know, we have nothing against what Turning Point's doing in the community. They've, it's been a positive thing. Okay. We know that. And I'm not I'm not disregarding that at all. All I'm saying is that we need to really think about this because that's a huge. It's not going to look good, one. Number two, aesthetically, and number three, I, I want to make sure that our property values are still going to be there. If we have a 42-inch fence rule for the front of our property, then that's the rules. You guys haven't changed that. You know, if, we ha if we have to put a fence up, we have to get approval to do it. What about if they moved it back 10 feet, the fence? They move the fence back 10 feet. Or 15 or. It had to be more than that I mean, because in the, the parking lot. 300 feet back. The church sits about 300 feet back. Uh, yeah, it's pretty far back. Let me, yeah. Their parking lot takes up the whole west end of the um, their, their property. And, um, you know, I know they have a lot of traffic. They have in and out every day in the mornings with their kids drop off, pick mm -hmm. up. Their Sunday morning worship is very, very, and their Tuesday night, I think it's Tuesday night worship, yes. They they have a big parking, it's full as well. And, um, you know, we... Or to the edge of the parking lot, so that there's still, because it looks like there's trees or something that line the parking lot. But if they pulled it, I'm just trying to think of... Well, there's there's got to be a way. I have a question. Sure. Are you opposed to the additional two feet... On certain parts of the perimeter or the entire perimeter you're opposed to the two extra feet well actually it's more than two feet because they would only be allowed 42 inches in the front is oh, the so maximum the height and they're wanting two but the sides would be the they want eight feet instead of a six foot right, right and um, so for so is, the, want eight is foot. the front the post road is the front or 46 the both foot? they have two front yards because it's on account on a corner, corner. So technically, the only thing that could be fenced in Post would be from the back corner. All this will be. Okay. Do you mind? Can I? Yeah. Let me show you on a map here. This is. So she would know, be able to fence spot. in. Yeah. This is here and here. So and they would this, be able to fence in. The taco trucks on that corner. I know exactly. They could go. I'm just trying to understand. Let's see. Where am I? Okay. Destroyed 46th Street. So here's her building. She could go a eight foot or six foot fence here and here. And this would be all that would be able to be fenced in. Everything else would have to be 42 inches. So from so this now front she corner wants here, so she's eight foot here and there. here. And this is all chain link right here. Correct. Eight foot chain link. Right. right, eight foot chain link from, well, this would still be wrought iron because it's visible. She's talking back here in the woods, okay. so. So so chain link would be correct. this. And then, and then wrought iron would be that. 
Okay. And wait, this is a current fence? No, there's no fence there now. No, she's she, saying she would that be allowed to do a six foot fence right there. So this is without the variance. Correct. Right. Do you guys see that? No. Did you see? Yeah, I'm happened. sorry, Tom. I thought I heard. Okay. It's okay. Okay. So look. So this is the chain link. Yeah. And this That's would be the wrought iron. Yeah. Without the variance, it would be here. six foot. Yeah. Six, six foot. Yeah. And they're asking for that. Right. Yep. Okay. Sometimes that's just very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They want to do change here. That's how you get rid of the dwell iron. Without the variance, it would only be allowed. It didn't really activate. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. The thing about so frontage. I'm to find out what, what do I do? Yeah. Well, what's, what's, what's I'm well, what is actually, you know, like your, our covenants, right? Well, not covenants, but the rules now are 42 inches on the frontage. Correct. Anybody. doesn't Correct. matter. Okay. Correct. And if, if this goes through and an eight foot fence goes up, you're just setting a precedent for any business owner, homeowner, anybody in the neighborhood. Well, we'd like to fence in our whole property too because of the same reasons they have. You know, we know it's I think that would be different because this is a church with a school. I understand. This isn't a, a there's, residence. But that's, there's choices here with that, that <coughs> school. The church sits back. Their playground sits in the back. I can see them fencing off the east side of the perimeter where the wooded area is. And I can see them fencing off where the school and the church is where they have to go through to get there. But not not out by the street on Post Road. <coughs> it doesn't make sense. Okay, well, I mean, that's just I'm our, sure the board will take that into yeah. consideration. You know, I mean, it just, it'll look like a fortress. And yeah, I just want to say, and got, you know what I, how I feel about fences. I've got four kids in school, and it is a terrifying time sending kids to school. Uh, my kid's school has an eight foot fence, and yeah. better or worse, I mean, it, it's, it's not that unusual. Hey, you pull down your microphone. Oh, I was just saying, I have, <laughs> I have four kids in school, elementary and middle school, and I was saying that it is, it is a, every morning it's hard, you know? And you just terrifying. hear, every, there's a mass shooting every day in this country. It's terrifying. And like, my, my kid's school has, and it's a chain link fence, so like, what is that gonna do? Is it gonna stop a bullet? But, I mean, the goal I think is to keep mm -hmm. unwanted guests out and to have some measure of, well, that and, and some measure sure of control. Needles and needles and what pets. other paraphernalia yes. so that. In that neighborhood, I'm well, sure it exactly. is. Exactly. But my reason for saying that is, um, I live in Lawrence, right? My kids go to school in Lawrence. I don't know that an eight foot fence is that unusual from what I've seen is all. And it's, it, it's unfortunate. It's the unfortunate reality of the times, I would have to say. You know, we're just here to tell our, tell our story and what, right. how we feel. I'm glad that we've had the opportunity to do so. I just want people to stop and think, though, a little bit about that. I know that our times are different. Anything could happen any place, anywhere. We could walk right out of here and something happened. You are absolutely okay? correct. So you cannot prepare for everything. If you live in fear, then you got a problem. Mm -hmm. We can't live in fear. Just can't do it. We also can't be... We also can't naive well, and not true, prepare can't over if you see that there's a problem on the property which i think is what tanya is is telling us that they're having problems on the property with unwanted guests or guests that have left mm -hmm. we are yeah, but we're, we're preparing us you're living in a home though kathy this is a school this is a school where we are sending our children and they're targeted to get an education and they're they're specifically targeted we've got Paraphernalia, drug paraphernalia on a playground at a church. 
how do we prevent that from happening? You know, not saying that an eight foot fence is going to resolve that, but it may deter some of it. And like I mentioned, fences will get damaged and it'll look even worse. Um, you know that. Apartment properties all the time get the chain link fences cut and, and broken. We need to move on. Let's, but yes. Anyway, I'm not going to go any. I'm not going to go into it. You guys, you do your thing. We're just voicing how we feel. We're concerned. Absolutely. And, absolutely. and I got it all in the notes. Yeah, Kathy, we do appreciate it. your yeah, time. Absolutely. This is, well, there, this is a. We're talking about big yeah, issues. You know, at the YMCA, we had to put up an eight-foot fence yes. because we had a shooting yes. on a soccer field. Yeah. Now, I mean, come on. Now we have to put in cameras and eight-foot fence. It is the world and. And I don't think the fence we put up at the Y affected the neighborhood, but it gave us some security that one young person not hurt or shot is I get it. worth it. And whatever we decide, we do care about the neighborhood. Absolutely. And if the neighbor My husband says word. we have four acres where we're at. Are you going to let us allow us if we come? Apply and we'll hear your honest right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, honestly, we, we, we are older and we have every time we come home, we're concerned about our safety. And and if you want to put up an eight foot fence, you can apply and present your case and yep. the board will make a decision based on what your findings of facts are. I think your concerns are valid. Absolutely. This isn't this isn't like the shed. This isn't like the shed at all. OK, I think I think I hear what you're saying. I do. And um, and that's why I came out with the map. And, you know, I think it, we're not opposed to a fence. We just don't want it out at the street level where... How far in would you want it? Uh -huh. 100 feet, 100 feet back. back would be okay, but it just, it, it'll be... And it's in the middle of their parking yeah, lot. Feet I is, understand that. So it's going to... I mean, is there a rhyme or reason? Further or whatever, but I, you know, um, <clears throat> I love that Turning Point has taken a major step in making our neighborhood better. Okay? Perhaps. You know? I don't go to church there. I have a church that I attend and I have been my whole life. But all I know is, is that we need more people to care about our community than what we have. So all I know is, is that I'll be back up here. We will okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for Thanks, air your, cause no, I, and we, we do appreciate everything that you, you've said. So, and I've, I've taken notes also. And yeah. clearly we've drawn on our maps and, <laughs> and everything into consideration. We'll hear from the city of Lawrence, Dan. It's going to be part of our history. That shed was something else. Do we have the city of Lawrence? Uh, Sri Van Gogh, city engineer, and I have reviewed this case. We think because of the merits of the school itself being totally unique to the discussion, uh, the other areas that we see fences in the city being incorporated for such things, the history of the area, we believe that this should be approved or we see no reason for it to be denied might be a better way to put it. Any questions? Any questions for Dan? Did, did you see any distinction between like Post Road or 46th Street, you know, in terms of? One thing we think is the church itself sort of stands by itself. It's yeah. sort of alone right there. It's a big open area. And we feel that, uh, that one thing that did concern us a little bit was the chain link portion, particularly when it was depicted with barbed wire, but understanding that barbed wire can't be utilized. And as long as it's back and not on that visible corner of, uh, if it's done properly uh, in yeah. terms of its appearance, it could actually help beautify that corner and mm -hmm. I think to some degree. But it looks like it's in the tree line. Also. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you're correct, Faith. So we got comfortable with that. But uh, keep in mind also that they will have to file plans and a permit for the Absolutely. approved. So we have another shot at being sure it's what we want to see. Any other questions? Thank you, Dan. Tanya, we, petitioner, do you have anything else to? I just want to add, and, and happy to meet the Clarks, always glad to meet neighbors, <laughs> but I want to add this, that our concern is the neighborhood be beautified as well. You know, we keep our property up. We're out there every week picking up trash that's thrown out the car windows. We make sure 
that our property's up. Now we're not planning to put it right at the sidewalk. We're planning to put it on this side of the trees. Yep. Right, and um, we're going to add a little bit of lighting there so that it is safer at night. But we, our greatest concern, even on the north side of our property, it's not going to be right at the street. You know, we want if they come up there and they can't get in, they have room to turn around and go back out safely. We're considering all of that, and we certainly support the Clarkson one in the neighborhood to be beautified and safe. That's what we want as well, and I can promise you that it's going to be beautiful um, with the plans, and we will submit them again. You'll be able to see them, but uh, we couldn't even order fencing until we get approval one way or the other. So we, we're starting here. So I just wanted to add that. I don't want them to be fearful what we're going to do because we're going to make sure it represents very well our core values and our love for the neighborhood as well. Thank you. Thank you. Before well, you come leave, back, come back, come back. <laughs> don't run away. <laughs> we're not going to bite just a little bit. Are you going to do landscaping to break up the, the fence? Yes. We, Can we're you sort of describe what you're visualizing? Well, when you first approach our corner, we call it our corner at 46 and post. Here's your corner. Three of the four corners. Um, we're going to make that a brick display with our turning point name on it. And um, my husband and I are battling, battling between a fountain and a fire, I mean, a flower pit. Uh, or I'm going more for the flowers. He wants the water fountain, but we'll I'm talk to put about it over it. his building. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Say, this one's mine, that one's yours. <laughs> yes. He's and doing so construction, he's got, he could do it right now. That's what I said. They don't have to worry about them out there in that water when they don't need to be, you know, right? 40, 56. But we're going to make that a nice corner. All right, and from there, you'll see the pillars, the brick pillars, and you'll see the bushes that we're gonna add uh, because we want it to look preppy, if I could use that terminology. <laughs> Our kids are awesome kids, and uh, we're excited. We want them to feel, they're already in uniform, so we want them to feel like they're coming to a very high, expensive place, um, and we tell them that all the time because they're not just anybody. They're very special kids. And so we're gonna make the land look like what we want them to be, okay? So yeah, it's gonna be beautiful. And I live out in Geist. I live on Geist. And um, because I live in a nice house, I don't want the Lord's house to be any less than mine. That's the way I look at it. And one Thank more you. thing, you know, there are lots of very beautiful native plants that attract pollinators. <laughs> We'll work, I'll work with her on that. We'll, 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 I'll work with her on that. <laughs> the one prop, the, the acre and a half that we bought south, right between us and Harrison Point, we, we plan to keep that natural. We're just going to clean out all the weeds and keep the trees. We want to keep as many trees as possible, and if not, add more trees, because we, we, like, we like the trees and the property. <laughs> Any other questions? So you don't have actually... Uh, plans for the fence yet? We only have the preliminary because, uh, as you may know, my husband is also putting in a fence at, at um, Harrison Ford, and uh, we're trying to get in on his deal. So the, the more church you buy, the cheaper it is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we only we only had time to do, really do the preliminary before I needed to see whether we could even do it or not. Okay. I mean, do you have a guess as to how far back the fence is going to go? From the road? Mm -hmm. It's only about 25, 30 feet from the road, but it's right at the beginning of our parking lot itself and on the other side of the tree. So maybe about 20 feet. Okay. So the, so just, so the intention is to fence in the parking lot? Yes. That makes sense. And we're going to keep that even all the way down post road. So it'll, there'll be plenty of green between the fence and the sidewalk. Okay, well, can I come down with my map? <laughs> like, we could go well laid plan. So, there you go. Are we were looking at this. The barbed wire is for this section. No barbed wire. No barbed wire. Chain. Rod iron here. Rod iron. My, my mind is still uh, shed. <laughs> I'm just imagining these neighbors putting barbed wire between the houses. Sure. This is the chain link. And then this would be the raw iron. Mm -hmm. We were saying without the variance, you can do it to like build a structure. Right. So, parking lot. The parking lot's 
here. Will there ever be another mic? Or a I just want you to have a clear picture. <laughs> Do you want to see yes. the close up picture? Yes. Okay. Is Any other questions the for um, this is post road? Yeah, and there's I don't have more questions. That so we got 45 feet from the edge of the road to the edge of the parking lot. Okay, where she's going to put this. Well, she's, she's I'm good. Okay, yeah. you look at this. Yeah, so what she was saying, hey Renee, could yeah. you come over to this um, side of the room? I'm coming to your side. <laughs> That's good. We want equal time. Um, Do you have does the board have any more questions for Miss Harris? Maybe. No, I don't. Oh, okay. Anyway, so this is a blown up, makes sense. But like it's a road. Yeah. There's the trees that I was talking exactly about. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's 45 feet Sorry. from the edge of the road. So it's always helpful to understand exactly what I'm approving. So. <laughs> Excuse me for drawing on my map. Plenty mouth. of room for people to come in, turn around, get out. Mm -hmm. okay. And then let me zoom out and go over here to 46th Street. Zoom back in. She's going to put the fence like about it's, right. The next here. one's on a billboard. Oh, along okay. that line. It's the same. Okay. So, so you're going to have probably more like a street. I can't help you. Yeah. It's December. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was showing them. Okay. Everybody okay right now? Thank you, Ms. Harris. Ms. Clark, you do have, have last time. word. Yeah. Okay. The board now will be voting on. 22 LSV 16 4501 Post Road, variance of development standard of the City of in Indianapolis Consolidated Zoning Subdivision Ordinance, Chapter 740, Article 3, Section 7B to allow for an eight foot fence. Ouch. I, I always bring two now. Subject to the, the new location, right? Oh, they'll have to present a site plan for the yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll still have a site plan to come. Is there a motion made? You can keep it. We'll get another vote. Oh, we're, we're voting now. We're voting now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Right. So this is just. This is just the church. This is just allowing it. That's and then the they'll just take plan later. Yeah, yes. And then y'all take care of that. I will. 16. We just decide whether or not they yeah. can. Yeah. She said 16. Renee, I voted on the wrong one. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. It's 16. It was 16. It's 16. 17 right. 17's, 17's next. 17's the pantry. 15 was. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> the board has unanimously it's granted right, your Tom, petition. You. It's okay, late. Good. We know. Now the board will be voting on, I mean, not voting, but hearing. hearing. Where to go? Where to go? 22 LSV 174554 Post Road, variance of development standard of the City of Indianapolis Consolidated Zoning Subdivision Ordinance, Chapter 740, Article 3, Section 7B, to allow for an eight foot fence. Ms. Harris. Did you count the votes? Why? Did you count the votes? Yeah. Did you yes, we're seeking a variance on our 4554. Post Row, North Post Row property, um, again, around our pantry. Um, we have had a a fencing up there to kind of keep them from driving on the property. However, that was ran over. And so we thought <laughs> we could um, <coughs> beautify that corner and make it synchronize with what else we plan to do in the neighborhood. Um, and, and I do understand the Clark's concern about maybe eight foot on that corner, because I think we probably could come down to about six. I still wouldn't want to do four, because like I said, I, I think that's just for cosmetic, not really for deterrent, like a six foot or eight foot would be. But 
Um, I would like to also say that we want to keep our, those that come there safe. We get donations from all over the city and a lot of times if we're not there, the donations are picked over, things are left on the ground. Um, we have a box that's secured, but a lot of times we get more things than what can go in the box. So we would like to schedule, we, we're planning to do some rescheduling ourselves, but we also would like to be able to control the traffic on our corner. This is not just that corner, we own the lot next to it as well. It should be like an um, empty lot. Yeah. that we had cleared out for parking. And so we want to kind of like put that corner. But you're not putting together. the fence around that lot. Yes, eventually. I, I don't know, okay. it's, I don't think it's in this one. No, no, okay. We also own the le next three houses and uh, Pastor Tim Behind it? No, beside it. Okay. We own all the houses directly across from us except for the first one on, on that 45th to 50, 46. Okay. Post. And so we want to kind of uniform that area, and that's where the rod irons come in. But I can see, you know, I'm just going to say, if it's not a eight foot, we would we would work with bringing it down to maybe six. Uh, but we would need two gates because of the 46 entrance and mm -hmm. the post road entrance. And um, I, again, uh, we want to beautify the area, but we're having a problem. Uh, with some things that are happening on our property when we're not there. And so we really need to stop that. Sometimes my grandchildren work at the pantry mm -hmm. and they're going through the bags or the donations and, and if they're there at night or late and getting ready, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to consider. And I know we all know that um, things are changing, but I, we just want to deter, not to stop anybody. Um, if you ever stop in a post, I mean, a turning point, you find out we're a bunch of friendly folks. We really are, but we still need to protect what's being donated to us and also those that are working there. And I do believe that this would help with the property and maybe uh, deter some of the sleepovers that we're experiencing. Mm. Oh. Yeah. By like homeless sleeping on your property? Where I, I, I can say they probably are mostly homeless. Um, most of the men will handle that. They don't let me just go over there anymore. I'm a I'm, I'm mom, you know. Uh, but I would say this, we're finding the drug paraphernalia. You know, they're behind our building there. They're on the porch. Um, you know, yeah. it's changed. We've been here 20 years. Yeah. And um, so we, you know, we're just, we're just protecting the family as much as we can. We believe in God, believe me. Um, but, you know, we're going to put a fence. We want some kind of deterrent for them feeling like they can just come on our property and do what they want to do. <sighs> I try to keep it, you know. I understand the it. nine foot at the church, but I, th yeah, the eight foot. Eight but foot. I think over with the pantry, I, I have a little bit of a, problem how tall it is, especially since it is a smaller lot. A smaller lot. Mm -hmm. It's more residential type thing. So we already considered that actually yeah. uh, not going eight foot on that corner. We're just trying to get in on see how far we could go as far as eight or would it be six. But we want to uniform that corner because even the, right. the, the petition I don't have before you right now is the other side, what we call our northwest corner there with the garage. Mm -hmm. We want to refence that in as well. So we want to bring everything together. That's our goal. This is the pantry. I know, but what's what on the pantry? She owns the, the garage on the northwest corner. Yeah. yeah, she owns that property too. So okay, okay. So as long as it could be wrought iron, I, I'm not against it being lower on the on the okay. corner there. I have a, I have a question because your neighbor has a fence, a uh, wood fence. How mm -hmm. tall is that? Is that a six foot privacy? It might be. Yeah. Would you? No, and, I, and I'm looking at the, the plan, and it's more of a square than a rectangle. Are you going to fence it up to the existing fence of the neighbor, or is it going to be smaller? The, actual, the, the addition of fence will be a little bit smaller, even though, uh, because we don't want to take it in the whole corner. We want to keep in mind that people are walking that mm -hmm. corner like that. Mm -hmm. So the corner lot, and, and we want to add some, deck, some landscape as well. So it, it'll be inside, well inside our property. 
they are on it. She'll have to submit a plan. Sure. Right. Is the pantry open to the public or is that open to church members? Oh, no, members? that's public. It's open to the public? Yeah. It's not just a pantry either. It's a clothing. Okay. Also, yeah, food and clothing. Do you know what your traffic, like, what your foot traffic is? Um, they, the pantry tells me they serve between 250 and 300 on a month. Um, so like daily? Hmm? I'm, I'm trying to think of daily. Oh, daily. How many well, they're only open right now on Mondays and Saturdays. So well, that's, that's what they're doing. Month, mm -hmm. And yeah. that's why we're having so much traffic. problem. If it's just two days, yeah. Yeah, that's why we're having so much problem. Like on Tuesdays, our Bible class, so we can't open. Mm -hmm. Wednesdays, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff going on, so we can't open. But we are going to go back to our Thursday. Um, but in the meantime, people are just... I mean, they're dumping stuff. We have mattresses, couches. Mm -hmm. We have all kinds of stuff that the- That's not a very big building. <laughs> no, it's not. And um, they're, it's just that free access during the time that we're not there, that we're mm -hmm. having the problems. Yeah. So you're willing so to go are down are to- amending the uh, petition that's, to a six foot? Okay. Yep. Is the board okay with a six foot? Yeah. Amending it to six foot? Okay. Six foot front yard. We Six still feet. haven't heard from the Vermont. Right, I'm just right, making right. sure that yeah. We're, yeah, we're, we're talking trying about six foot all the way across and so not eight. I'm, yeah, six foot. Six foot to me is a man. Particularly since the neighbors felt yeah. six feet, it seems more appropriate. Because like you say, the neighbors has a six foot. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then that would be it would tie aesthetic in wise. Aesthetically. It's stretching. Right. Okay. Because it is residential. Fence up. Oh, you did? Yes. And this side is more residential. Yeah. 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 A lot. This side of the street. Six. <laughs> okay. Any more questions for Ms. Harris? So Thank you. It would be an all around six foot fence. Yes. yes. Okay. That's all. I want to make sure. Our iron, right? Yes. Our iron. Our iron. We want to keep the same fence that they're putting yeah. up. On all four pressure. sides? Right on all four sides? No, uh -uh, because the wood fence, we just put that wood fence up about two I think you, summers. Didn't you tell me you were going to connect it to the corners of the building? Connect it, but not yeah. take down that wood fence. So that back part will be wood and not wrought iron. I see. So it'll connect the wrought iron to the wood. Because you own that property, right? Yes. Got it. Okay. It's easy to get the neighbors. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, yeah, we have to ask. Ms. Clark. Clark. Welcome back. <laughs> we haven't seen you in ages. I know. You an address. Yeah, long time no see. <laughs> okay. The uh, the area that the pantry's at it used to be the old liquor store there right. many years yes. ago. And um, that is a small parking lot. It's a small area. I'm sorry. It's very small. And yes, we do know that people dump stuff there because we mm -hmm. I walk my dog twice a day around the block and I see it and I see people have pulled through and gone through everything. My thing is, is if they're, they're not there during the day or if someone wants to drop something off, it's gonna be dumped right outside the fence. It's mm. not gonna be inside, it'll be out outside the fence. It'll be even worse. So um, we don't really agree with a six foot fence, especially around the front. Those are residential houses frontage right along Post Road. And yes, they own all the properties along there except the corner at 45th and Post. And I know they have bigger plans for the future, which is fine, but the fence that's also at the corner at 45th and, uh, excuse me, 46th and Post, it's at the northwest corner. There's a chain link fence there. It used to be a house and the house was taken down, but now it's got their garages that they use. It was never properly gone through zoning like it should have. Um, the house was destroyed, but now there's just garages there. That fence looks crappy, and, they, and she said something about making everything more uniform, which is fine, but the 42-inch fence along frontage and residential area has already been established, and I don't think a six-foot fence along the front at Post Road is going to look good, um, and we oppose it. We don't, we don't want that. I mean, we want that they have a pantry, and they're doing wonderful things, but again, if they're not manning, the, manning it, it's going to... I know there have been beds, beds out there, there's been couches out there, and there, no one reads the signs because they say on their building, no furniture, n none of the things that people have been dumping, but they don't read the signs so they just get rid of stuff. It's going to be on the outside if they're not there 
managing it and taking care of it. Um, do you have on something? That side of the on that I side of the street, you. I just think that it would, it's not going to be, um, if they would put a 42 fence along the, all their properties, it would make it look more uniform. Yeah. You know? But I just don't think that it's something that we would like to look at every day, especially on that corner. Um, but I'm not the powers that be. Sure. So I think we can agree that the dumping is going to occur yeah. with or without the fence, right? right? It's just where. Do you think that there would be a difference between a four-foot fence or a six-foot fence? It would, they, there would still be dumping, right? It's going to happen. We have yeah, people dump on our, on our street all the time, and we end up getting rid of it because we're proud homeowners, and we like to make sure that the neighborhood looks good. I mean, we pick up trash every single day. Maybe this even, in, even in neighbors that don't pick up trash, we pick up their trash. Mm -hmm. Okay? I mean, we love where we live, but we don't want it to look like it's a, you know, yeah. we're trying to keep everybody out, but we also want to make it look good at the same time. Maybe the city should have like a regular heavy trash pickup day or something. We do. On when is it? First, on the third week of each month on your regular trash day. The third week of each month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this week. Wouldn't that be cool if that went on that billboard that's always in front on top of it? So, honey, it's been that way for I know, I'm just saying, years. people don't know. <laughs> so I'm saying that I had, a, there was a love seat dumped on the bike path near my home, like this week. People dump, like in the weirdest places, I don't mm -hmm. get it at all. Yeah. Because they can. People, because yeah. they don't, I think it, honestly, they may not know about the heavy trash pickup. I was trying to be coy. Um, we have heavy trash collection, third week. All you people out there. <laughs> Third week every month. Can we get Check it on the a, website. Can we get it on a Facebook? There's been three TVs on 45th yeah. Street. TVs are not considered heavy trash. You have to special, you have to take yeah, that's, to a yeah, talk stop location. We need to let our neighbors know what they need to do. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I agree the dumping's a problem. It is. It's a, it's a problem all over. Um, however, I, I can understand her not, or the, the pantry not wanting the dumping on their, on their property. I picked up trash. Like I said, I walk my dog twice a day. Yeah. I pick up trash along the front frontage where their their place is, and, and at the 45th and Post. That's just what we do. We just we you know you just make it look good as best as that you can. Yeah, but <clears throat> it's, it's, yeah. Is that building zone commercial? Is that yeah. which one? It says it is. The one that we're the talking entry? about. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's been. It's been there for it's been a it's been a commercial building for a while. Yeah, it was a liquor store before it was the pantry. Yeah, because I was I was thinking uh, I think it was yesterday morning that I saw yesterday was Monday, right? And I thought the amount of effort it took to dump that love seat on the bike path. Mm -hmm. I, I just to get it all the way over there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't understand the dumping personally. So I don't really have a solution to that other than we just everyone needs to know about the heavy trash pickup, which is the third week of every Maybe month. Maybe they could put that in the inserts on the lift for our I have. <laughs> I have. I put it there. I put it everywhere. Any more questions for Ms. Clark? Thank you. Thank you. No. Thank you. Thank you. And, then, and, and then she didn't move it to, from an eight foot to a six foot. That's okay. The other thing is, is though, we didn't get proper notice. And, I'm, and I, we're, the, we're neighbors here, but I'm sure there's other neighbors in our, in our, in our area. So she's only required to give 10 days and she did send them out 10 days prior. I've got her affidavit. Wow. So mail, you know. Our post office is a shame. I get mail one time a week. Yeah. Literally one day a week. You gotta get the online. They have the, I get it to my email. Yes, I do too. Well, we're talking, no, business. I can go a week oh. without, oh. and I'm right across the street from the post office yes. at our business. And we will not, they go on vacation, I don't get mail. Yeah. They'll tell us yeah. we won't, you won't get it for a week. Uh, my house, I don't. Well, get you drop it off once a week. You know, you're leaving the post office. Drop it off. Uh, uh, we're on the way back. Postman post post shortage. So, yeah. okay, uh, we'll hear from the city. Oh, yeah, yep. city of Lawrence, please, Dan. Thank you, Dan Zerner, City of Lawrence. Uh, we, Sri and I, reviewed this petition. Petition. We do not see a reason to stand in the way of it. I do think some logic as to the height of the fence could be given by this board, but the merit for the need for the fence seemed to exist. We don't have a problem with it. Thank you. Petitioner, Ms. Harris, do you have anything else to add? You good? I Ms. would like to ask you a question. 
you have to come would up. you be yes you <laughs> would, would you be comfortable with 46 inches not six foot it just seems to me the scale is we're talking about turning point is this massive building and massive lot and we have a little corner lot that the two foot six foot fence seems out of place in that setting and probably won't do anything to stop the dumping or whatever so i guess i'm much more comfortable with 46 inches than 42. six foot it's 42. 42 inches well when we considered uh you know, the variance for eight foot, the purpose was to stop the kind of dumping that we're getting because we do get a lot of foot traffic. And if, and, and I know sometimes they pull up their cars. Um, I'm not always there, but we have cameras everywhere. Uh, <laughs> so I, I tell you, they pull up their cars and throw stuff on our property. It would, that was why I didn't want to go lower than six feet because there's more effort. Mm -hmm. And I figured that would help deter some of that. Um, but we're going to do some things differently as well as far as manning the building and changing our hours. So we're going to try to work with that. But like I said in the beginning, it's not just what's happening when we're away. It's, it's, it's some things happening when they're there going through all this stuff at night and preparing for opening. And, and it's mostly the older people at our church that man the pantry. You know, we, our young people will come in in the evening sometimes, but not going through the clothes and, you know, and, and seeing what we're going to keep and what we're not going to keep. And I would love for them to be uh, fenced in, feeling safer. So, and, and, and people being able to throw something over a fence, four foot is just not really going to deteriorate any of that I mean what's the height of a bed of a pickup truck Probably about four feet yeah yeah but I thought you, you know that's why I thought foot six foot be. it didn't have to be eight foot eight foot was my thoughts because wanting to keep that area uniform look but like it's stockade yeah. yeah we wouldn't do that we're going to make sure our landscaping counters all that because like I said that's not our goal we don't our, we don't want our kids feeling like they're going to prison yeah okay right. so we're going to make sure the area doesn't reflect uh, prison or jail or any of that, Good luck with that How far, I mean I know the area so where is this it's going to be is there still going to be a walking area or Around the sidewalk, we won't interfere with the sidewalk, and there, there is, uh, there are some utility um, boxes on our property on the corner there. So we'll also have to keep that in mind in our landscaping because they'll have to have access to that. Um, but we're not trying to be right up on the street, um, and even with our drive-in, we're trying to make sure they can pull right back out if they drive in and, and the fence is closed, you know. Um, I agree there's no sign it's just going to stop what we're doing, but we're trying to bring in accumulation of things to kind of help with what we're dealing with at 46 and post. Will there be some landscaping? Oh, yes. Yes. We, 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 um, more so, we're, we're redoing the building first of all, because it's going to be painted and roofing changed. And these are all our spring projects. So we're really excited <laughs> um, about fencing in and, and fixing up our, our pantry. But the uh, landscaping will be more so on our side of the fence, okay, okay, okay. you know? Um, just again to beautify it and our porch to our pantry, you know? She, yeah. she can put it in this area because it's right away. So we'll like show it. you. We'll share. Once we are able to get the drawings together, we'll be glad to share. We, you do everything first class. Just worrying about that scale, a little building and a big fence. Yeah, yeah that, I, I, I agree with what you're yeah. saying. But I see the concern here with what she's saying. Yeah. About five feet. Do they make a five foot fence? I don't know. I assume I think they can make anything. I think they're four, they make a five six, foot. Eight. Do they? Oh, Unless really? I'm into my backyard, a five foot fence. Hmm. The That's manufacturer good. that we're going with. Well, he, and a pool that. requires a five foot fence. Yeah. A minimum of five foot fence if you have a pool. Oh. Is that going to have a Rottweilers? Fence. Just kidding. But. It, five foot is very, very tall. <laughs> I mean, it's. <laughs> I'm only five foot. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm five, five, so. Yeah. 
No, it could be. That would be me lifting something above yeah, my head. It sounds head. like we are on the fence, but, um, <laughs> but I just want to—I just want to be clear that we're talking, and we are. Just for the, to clear, clear the record. We are all discussing the petition as amended at this hearing for a six foot. Correct. Okay. Correct. I just want to make sure eight foot's off the table. Out, no. eight, eight foot's off the table. Eight, eight foot's off the table. As amended at this hearing, six, six foot. Right. Yes, ma'am. Considering. But Mr. Now we're talking six, between six and four. So I just want to make sure eight is off the table. But we're just discussing between eight and four, right, at this moment. Yeah. Right. Six. six. Or six and four. Six. Right. Still a long, a long night. <laughs> so what are we voting on? Six foot. We're voting on, no, I, yes. We're voting we're on, on six, on six, six foot. foot. Okay. Kathy, did you have anything else to add before we? Well, when you say you're going to vote on a six-foot fence, is it? Are you going to say a six-foot is going to be what it's going to be? Or are you going to consider a, low, a shorter fence, especially on that side of the street? Well, she petitioned for an eight-foot fence and agreed to reduce it to a six-foot. Right now, that's what they're voting on. So then are you going to notify the neighbors again for another hearing regarding the size of the fence? No, because she's decreasing. She's not increasing the size of the fence. So she wouldn't have to notice again. It can be amended here at the, at the yeah. hearing. So then why are we even here then? To give your position on the, yeah, on the petition. Yeah, we even you have even voiced that it's a six-foot fence that would be off of that corner in that building. So uh, we're discussing the unique safety Considerations. There's a lot of. You don't have to look at it on a day You have to listen. Okay. And that's why you're invited to give your position. Right. I did. And then the board mm -hmm. takes your information and the information presented by the petitioner and makes the best decision that they feel is best for the community. Each of them individually. That's why they have blind ballots. We've never said it doesn't matter. It, what I'm saying to you is that 42 inches has already been established for frontage property. And that's why we're here. And that's why we're here is because this is an exception to the rule. So this is an exception? This that's is an exception be, to the rule. That's what a variance is. is. That's this, what a variance I mean, you saw is. The, you saw the neighbors arguing over the fence. So in any time, so any time someone wants something other than what the rules allow, then they come to us, and then we weigh we weigh a series of factors. So, what the five factors that we weigh is whether it's going to injure the public health, safety, morals, general welfare of the community. The second one is whether the use is the use to the adjacent properties, which would be you folks, whether that that use is going to affect you in a substantial way. And we are taking everything you say into consideration, but that's just one of five factors. The third factor is whether it is there's a specific scenario that is unique to this property. The fourth one is whether us strictly applying the rules as they exist in the city, whether that is going to cause an undue hardship on them. And then the fifth one is whether or not um, granting the, the variance is going to um, interfere with the, the overall plan for the city. So you, so everything you're saying does matter, and I'm making notes of it, and it's, it's weighing in, but it's just one of five factors that we consider. So we're the only ones here, and no one in our neighborhood got proper notice. They did. They well, did. But according to the this rules, was mailed in proper time. It might have been so, you're going to do what you feel is best. Yes, okay? correct. Yeah. Regardless. But you don't have to look at it every single day. I'm just cautioning you that if you, if you drive down south on Post Road, what they found there is a beautiful piece of parcel. They've done a wonderful job on that corner where that church is and where that school's at. And I know that they've got big plans for the other side of the street. I do know that you guys want an apartment property in that, on that side of the street, eventually, at one point. Okay? I do know that. And that's why you're buying all those properties. That's not part of the hearing tonight. But yeah, I that's but right. I know what's going on. A 42 inch, you know, we would be okay with a 48, 48 inch, 48 inch fence going around this building. But I'm only voicing my opinion, and I know that they're trying to.
Right. But, but, but everything that you've said tonight has mattered and it has factored into our decision tonight. Right. Have you looked at the property itself? Yes. There is a lot of We all live in Lawrence, too. Utility is all on there, plenty of fence up, especially a six foot fence. It's not perfect, but you know what? Building small, it's not going to be a problem. Thank you for your time. That's all I can say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and your discomfort with it has been felt, and it has factored into our, our decision. Whether you agree with our decision or not, it has, it, we have felt it. Okay. okay. Board ready to vote. Board ready to vote. Uh, variant. The board is ready to vote on 22 LSV 17, Variance of Development Standard of the City of Indianapolis Consolidated Zoning Subdivision Ordinance, Chapter 7, 40, 40 Article 3, Section 7B, to allow for a six-foot fence, which a 42 fence is the recommended. The board has unanimously granted your petition. No other any, any other business? The Lawrence Board of Zoning Appeals is adjourned.